Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I'm telling you guys right now, using this build has made this Elden Ring playthrough one of the most effortless, painless, easiest playthroughs I've ever had so far. When you guys are using this build, it makes everything in the game way less threatening. You literally have the ability to tank all types of damage from smaller low level enemies to some of the hardest bosses in the game i mean if you play this build right you will seriously be unkillable you guys seriously need to make this build as soon as you possibly can because it gives you that opportunity to pretty much go wherever you want in the game without having to worry about dying the shield that you guys see in the gameplay footage here is very overpowered and i highly recommend getting your hands on it as soon as you possibly can and when you pair that up with magic, which is already super overpowered in Elden Ring, I mean, this combination is easily one of the best. I'm gonna show you guys today the best way to run a build like this, so you never have to worry about dying, and you also have the ability to do lots and lots of damage. If you guys make this build the way I did, trust me, you will never have to worry about dying in Elden Ring ever again. Let's take a deeper dive into the magic tank build. Before we get into the build, I want to thank you guys so much for all the support on the channel. I'm pretty sure every single one of the Elden Ring build videos that I dropped on the channel are on the verge of breaking over 100k views. If you guys missed any of those videos, I highly recommend checking them out. If you want to see more videos like this one in the future, be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more Elden Ring videos on the way. So the bread and butter of this build is the fingerprint stone shield that you see right here. And let me tell you guys, this shield was a pain in the ass to get. I highly recommend watching a video tutorial to get your hands on this because any other way is probably going to be confusing, but it is definitely worth it as you saw from the gameplay footage earlier. So what I know is not every person that watches this video is going to be the same level. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you what this build should look like at different level brackets. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a trip to Renala, the Moon Queen, which is one of the main bosses in the game. You can find her here at the Raya Lusaria Grand Library. She gives you a great rune that gives you the ability to respect your attributes. And we are going to use her so we can showcase what this build looks like at different levels in Elden Ring. Before we get into the other level brackets, I do want to show you guys my stats. So currently I am level 227. I decided that I was going to continue leveling up in Elden Ring just to get to max level, you know, get to the final playthrough of the game because honestly, why not, right? For my attribute points, I have Vigor at 60. Health is extremely important, especially if you're playing up close. Mind at 40, we are going to be using focus points to cast our spells, so it's important that Mind is also very high. Endurance at 35, Strength at 49, I believe you need at least 48 Strength to even use the Fingerprint Shield that I'm using in today's video. Dexterity 25, 80 Intelligence, Intelligence is going to be our highest attribute on this build. Faith at 8 and Arcane at 9. Now, let's say you're somewhere in the level 150 range. Your attribute points would look something like this. Vigor at 30, Mind 30, Endurance 25, Strength again 48 is important because we need at least 48 to use the shield. Dexterity 18, Intelligence still our highest attribute at 60, Faith 8, arcane nine now let's say you're about level 100 at the moment your attribute points would look something like this vigor at 25 mind 20 endurance 18 you can even go a little bit lower at 15 it's up to you strength again if you want to use the shield you need at least 48 dexterity 16 intelligence 40 faith 8 and arcane 9 and if you're somewhere around level 50, this is what your attributes would look like. Vigor 20, Mind 15, Endurance 17. With Strength being at 25, we're not going to be able to use the Fingerprint Shield, but there's a lot of different shields you can use until you're able to obtain the Fingerprint Shield. Dexterity 16, Intelligence 25, Faith 8, and Arcane 9. Just like all of my other Elden Ring videos, guys, if you're interested in obtaining any of the items that we go over in today's build video, I'm going to put a link in the description below for every single item. So we already took a look at the attributes. So let's take a look at the build in detail here. 
So obviously to make spells possible, we are going to be using a scepter, a glintstone staff, whatever you want to call it. This is the only way we can cast spells in Elden Ring. You need to have a staff similar to this. I'm using the Carrion Regal Scepter, mine is plus nine at the moment. Check this out, my attribute scaling right now for strength and dexterity is pretty low at D, but the only reason we are using this is for intelligence. And you can see our intelligence scaling is S tier, which is the highest tier. If you wanna use a scepter that I am using, keep in mind you have to have at least eight strength, 10 dexterity and 60 intelligence now the weapon you use on this build is completely up to you it's going to be personal preference you can see here that i'm using a cold uji katana maxed out fully maxed out plus 25 check this out guys attack power physical attack power 198 plus 142 we also do 158 plus 120 magic which makes a lot of sense for a setup like this because it is an intelligence strength build Attribute scaling is pretty good. Strength at C, intelligence at C, dexterity at B. Attributes required to use this weapon. Keep in mind, this is a pretty easy weapon to obtain. You get it very early on in the game. You only need 11 strength and 15 dexterity to use this weapon. But check this out, guys. Mine is the cold Uji Katana. So I have 105 frost buildup and 38 blood loss build up so currently at the moment we are stacking frostbite and blood loss simultaneously which is really good now if it were up to me i would use the moonveil katana on this build but you guys see that weapon all over youtube um it is easily top three meta weapons in elden ring right now i didn't want to use it just because i wanted to switch it up a little bit right here the moonveil but if you guys like this weapon if you want to use this weapon i have a couple of moonveil builds on my channel I'm gonna put a link to one at the top of the screen right now. Another really good weapon that you probably saw in the thumbnail for this video is the Dark Moon Greatsword, which I actually have fully maxed out. This weapon has a special ability called Moonlight Greatsword. Attack power 200 plus 90, magic damage 240 plus 287, which is very high. Attribute scaling definitely favors intellect over strength and dexterity. Keep in mind, you need at least 16 strength, 11 dexterity, and 38 intelligence to use this weapon. Obviously, with this weapon, we are going to be stacking frost damage, but the heavy attack is pretty cool. Gives you a decent amount of range, and you can stack frost and do lots and lots of damage with the heavy attack on this greatsword. So the most important item on this build that's pretty much going to make you unkillable for your entire playthrough is the fingerprint stone shield. Mine is plus 25, fully maxed out out it's not an ability that makes this shield so powerful it is actually the guard boost you can see our current guard boost right now is 90 which is very high we also have a spell on this build that's going to pretty much max out that guard boost and make it so we don't really take any damage at all no matter what enemy we're facing whether it's a low level enemy or a boss the spell i'm talking about is called the scholar's shield if you want to get your hands on this spell like i mentioned guys i'm going to put some links in the description below but once this spell is activated you can pretty much tank through every single thing in this game whether it's the range attack the melee attack um, a special ability from a boss low level enemy it doesn't really matter you're unkillable once this is activated this shield is very overpowered with magic because you can pretty much spam for example the comet spell stack a lot of damage and if that boss gets too close you just pull out your shield tank the damage and just continue on if anyone is interested in what my character is wearing here i have the black knife hood the preceptor's long gown no gloves and the preceptor's trousers i think it looks pretty cool it definitely fits the build you look like a magic warrior and i personally like it but it's personal preference whatever you guys want to wear so the talismans here i think are very important you probably have a couple of different combinations you can use but me personally for my first one here i'm using the great shield talisman which boosts guarding ability so the great shield talisman multiplies your guarding by 1.1 so if our guarding is currently at 90 that would make our guard boost at 99 which is pretty much fully maxed out right there will be links to the locations of all of these talismans in the description below so definitely don't miss out if you have any questions i'm also using the godskin swaddling cloth successive attacks restore hp this is pretty good to have especially if you have your melee weapon out 
um, using your shield, fighting up close. You can spam a lot of attacks, and as long as you're continuously attacking, you'll be stacking HP, which is pretty good to have. I'm also using the Radagon's Icon, which shortens spell casting time. I think this is very important if you're using spells like the Comet, or pretty much every spell in the game, because it's going to shorten that spell casting time. And in a game like this, Elden Ring, every second counts. Your equipment load can get pretty heavy on this build, especially if you add another weapon. For example, like if I wanted to add my Uji Katana on this build and hold up to three weapons, it's going to get pretty heavy here. As you can see, we are still at a medium load, but that's only possible because we have the Great Jars Arsenal equipped. With this talisman, we can have the shield in our left hand, we could have a scepter in our right hand, the Dark Moon Greatsword, and the Uji Katana. I also want to show you guys the spells that I'm using. So this is probably my favorite most used spell. It's very easy to spam. It's a very quick attack, and it also does a lot of damage. So the Comet. If you want to get your hands on the Comet, definitely check the links in the description below. This is the one I use the most, to be honest with you. It just does a lot of damage, and it's very reliable. The next spell is the Comet Azor, which is also very good. If you time this correctly, and you use the correct potions, I mean, you can pretty much one-phase a boss. As long as they're not moving around too much, you can one-phase them and do lots and lots of DPS. The next spell, we already went over the Scholar's Shield. This is going to make your shield 100% invulnerable to damage very important to have for a build like this also the carrion phalanx i think i'm saying that correctly this is a really good defense spell you can activate this with your shield so you can activate the scholar shield and put this defense spell up making you even more tankier and giving you even more defense on your build the next spell adula's moonblade which is another spell that i use a lot uh frost is definitely really good to use on most of the bosses in this game Honestly, most of the bosses are weak to frost anyways, so I think having a frost build overall is a pretty good idea. I want to show you guys my wondrous physic because I think it's actually really important, especially for a build like this. The Cerulean Hidden Tier eliminates all FP consumption, and this works very well with the Comet Azor spell, which I'm going to show you in just a second here. Also, the Opaline Bubble Tier significantly negates damage received, which means we can tank even more damage, right? But going back to the Cerulean Hidden Tier, check this out, guys. So, going back to Comet Azor, again, one of the most powerful spells in Elden Ring. So, let's say, for example, you want to buff up your shield. You have your defense spell up. You go ahead and drink this potion. Look at my FP bar, guys. Nothing is going on. We're not using any FP consumption whatsoever. Eventually, we are going to. But keep in mind, we can pretty much one phase a lot of bosses in this game using this spell. Well, that is the build, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you think I forgot to mention something, like I said, let me know in the comments below. But I seriously appreciate all of you. All the support on the channel has been unreal. All the support on the Elden Ring videos. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this video in any way, shape, or form, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel to become a part of the family, and I will see you all in the next Elden Ring video. Peace.